You've taken the leap and incorporated in Canada. Now, as you wear the hats of both an employee and a shareholder, you're presented with two primary ways to pay yourself, salary and dividend. Today, let's talk about the differences between paying yourself a salary or dividend by diving into the pros and cons of each, as well as how to best determine what's optimal for you. So let's get started. Benefits of drawing a salary. The number one benefit is a tax deduction. So when the corporation pays you a salary, it's actually considered an expense by the company in which it can claim a tax deduction. And this lowers the corporation's taxable income, which then in turn lowers the corporation's tax bill. So for example, if the corporation pays you a $60,000 salary, it will also get a $60,000 tax deduction. Though keep in mind that you will be taxed on the $60,000 of salary on your own personal tax return. But from the the corporation's perspective, it will be able to write off your salary, which is not the case for dividends. And this we'll be discussing a little bit more in a little bit. The second benefit is an increase in your RRSP room. Now, for those of you who are thinking about the future and you want to build your retirement nest egg, there are two main vehicles in Canada. The first being the RRSP and the second being the CPP. A salary increases your RRSP contribution room every single year, which is calculated by taking 18% of your earned income, keyword being earned income, such as salary income. Now, keep in mind that there is a max RRSP contribution limit of $30,780 for 2023, which is adjusted for inflation every single year. And the benefit of being able to contribute to your RRSP is that you are able to get a tax deduction on your personal tax return. So essentially, you get to shave off some of your tax liability based on your marginal tax rate. So let's say that if you are in the highest marginal tax rate of 53.5%, that means that you can save $53.50 of taxes for every $100 contributed to your RRSP. And that's not all. By being an employee, both you and the corporation are required to contribute to your CPP, also known as the Canada Pension Plan. Now, the third benefit to a salary is that there is no surprise tax bill. To pay yourself a salary, first you need to enroll in a payroll tax account with the Canada Revenue Agency or CRA. And this means with every salary payment, you would then need to remit federal and provincial tax along with CPP. Since you're paying your taxes a little bit every single month that you get paid your salary, you won't be surprised with a large tax bill when it comes to tax time. Now, the fourth benefit is that the banks actually prefer salary income. And what I mean by this is let's say that you are planning to buy a home in the next year or two and you're planning to apply for a mortgage. In this case, you would also need to consider what sort of income the banks prefer. And banks like predictable and stable sources of income such as salary income compared to fluctuating investment income like dividends. So we talked about the benefits. Now, what do you need to look out for when it comes to salary income? One of the biggest drawbacks with salary income is the administrative burden that comes with being compliant with payroll tax. You can't simply just transfer funds from your corporation to your personal bank account. You would actually need to register for a payroll account, remit your payroll taxes punctually by its due date, or otherwise you might be dinged with some hefty penalties and interest. At the end of the year, the company also needs to submit something called a T4 slip, which summarizes your income and all the payroll taxes that were remitted in the year. The second drawback is that you have less cash. As you may have guessed, you are left with less after tax cash after all the various withholdings such as federal and provincial provincial taxes, as well as CPP and EI. Though do know that EI, employment insurance, is optional for the self-employed. The third drawback are CPP costs. So while the federal and provincial taxes will vary based on your salary income, the maximum CPP contribution made when you are self-employed is $7,508.90 in 2023 if you earn $66,600 or more. This means that the $7,508.90 is less cash for you to work with. Now, this is where opinions get split. While you'll be receiving the CPP when you retire, some feel like it's like paying another kind of tax right now. So that is something to consider if you are talking strictly from a cash flow perspective. Now that we talked about the pros and cons of salary, let's jump into dividends. The advantages of going the dividend route is that it is number one, easy to transfer. So from an administrative standpoint, dividends are a lot easier. This is because you can simply move money 
directly from the corporation to your personal bank account. Though at the end of the year, you do need to file a T5 slip for all the dividend payments that were paid throughout the year. Another benefit to dividend payments is that you get the gross amount. And what I mean by this is that unlike salary income, which you receive after all the tax withholdings, leaving you wondering where all your money went, you actually receive the full dividend amount upfront without any withholdings. Another benefit are the dividend tax credits. So when it comes to individual income tax, you get the benefit of a dividend tax credit, which reduces your personal tax bill. Though keep in mind that this is just credit for taxes the corporation has already paid, which we'll be discussing in just a bit. You also get higher cash. So remember the CPP we discussed earlier? With dividend payments, you are not required to contribute to CPP, which means up to $7,508.90 more cash in your pockets if your salary is $66,600 or more in 2023. And another benefit to dividend payments are the asset protection. This may or may not be a huge factor, but by paying out profits within the corporation, it reduces the corporation's asset that would be vulnerable in the case of a legal lawsuit. Let's talk about some drawbacks for dividend payments. The first one is that dividend payments are not tax deductible and actually comes from after tax profits. This would mean that the company would first need to pay taxes on its profit and then distribute whatever is left over to you as the shareholder. Another drawback to dividend payments is that it does not create RRSP room, nor do you contribute to CPP. The reason being is that dividends are not considered to be earned income, which means that you cannot contribute to your RRSP annually. And as discussed, you also don't contribute to your CPP. So if you are concerned about funding your retirement through these vehicles like RRSP and CPP, then that would be something that you should also consider when deciding to pay a salary or dividend. Another drawback to dividends is that you might get tax surprises. For dividend payments, you need to have self-discipline and be able to put aside money for taxes. As I mentioned, one of the benefits is that you get the full amount, but the disadvantage here is that you need to proactively plan for your taxes ahead of time so that you are not surprised at the end of the year when you get your tax bill. You definitely don't want to be in a position in which you get a surprise tax bill that you can't afford since you already used up all that cash. This is different from salary in that taxes are withheld at source. Lastly, you need to know what sort of dividend you are paying yourself. Make sure to consult with your account before doing so. But just to kind of quickly summarize here, there are two types of dividends. The first being non-eligible dividends, which come with a lower dividend tax credit. And this is because it arises from funds that are taxed at the small business deduction rate. So here in BC, that small business deduction rate is 11%. Meanwhile, eligible dividends have a higher dividend tax credit on your personal tax return since they are taxed at the regular corporate rates, which is 27% here in BC. So how to decide the best option for you? I know we covered a lot today in comparing between salary and dividend payments. Some questions to ask yourself in order to determine what makes the most sense for you, your business's net income, how much after-tax money you need to fund your lifestyle, your interest in contributing to RRSPs or CPPs, any upcoming significant expenses or borrowing needs, as well as if you earn other sources of income personally. So how can you optimize your tax situation? Well, due to Canada's tax systems integration concept, the tax difference between salary and dividends is actually quite minimal. Whether you earn directly as a sole proprietor or through a corporation via dividends or salary, the overall taxes paid should roughly be similar. Do keep in mind that one of the main reasons for incorporating in the first place is the tax deferral benefit, which means that you enjoy a lower small business tax rate like the 11% in BC or the 12.2% in Ontario compared to if you were a sole proprietor and you had to pay personal taxes which range anywhere from 20% to 53.5%. While slight tax benefits might exist between provinces, it's more important to weigh the pros and cons of salary versus dividend payments and ensure that it aligns with your goals and objectives from both a personal and business perspective. And remember, you don't need to just stick to one type of payment you could actually pay a combination of salary and dividend. That's also an option for you. For instance, you can first secure a base salary for the work that you do for the business. 
And when the business is doing well, you could also reward yourself by paying yourself a dividend from the profits. Ultimately, this is a discussion that you want to have with your accountant before deciding what is the optimal decision for you. And if you are looking for a tax expert in Canada, make sure to get in touch with us. All the details are listed in the description box down below. If you are looking for other videos related to incorporating or buying a vehicle through your business, make sure to check out my other videos here. Thank you so much for watching today and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!